Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hero Voices. This is your host, Kate Did, and we come to share stories, share resources, and change the narrative of homelessness over here. Please follow us on all our social media platforms. And you know, we're on TikTok, we're on the YouTube streets, not as much, but we're getting better. We're on Instagram and things like that. So please go follow us over there. And if you don't know, now you know. But I told you on the last episode, so you should have known if you watched it, right? Right now, we're in October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Honestly, it should be celebrated. Not celebrated, but taught about every single month of the year. But here we are, for some reason, in America, we pick months for certain things when the problem's happening all the time. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the way it is. That's what we have to go with. <laughs> but we got to make sure awareness, as you do, you know me all the time. When we talk about this topic, I make sure you know different types of um, domestic violence. If it's in case it's your first episode, we're going to get all into that. We got to make sure you are educated and you know how to get help and things like that. So please sit back and relax. I'm going to introduce you to Shamara. Shem oh my God, mess. Shema Shamara. I, I feel like that, I did that wrong. You did I do that wrong? <laughs> I practice in my head. But it is <laughs> I promise. I practice. Yes. You can introduce your name, your name and say it better than I would. And she's with Sisters in Purple. And she'll tell you actually more about that organization. And after that, hopefully this is not too much. Explain to them what DV actually is, domestic violence. Okay, no problem. My name is Shamara Kelly. <laughs> I am um, the co-founder of Sisters in Purple, also community organizer with Voices of Women. Um, Sisters in Purple was created with just three survivors, three survivors that wanted to create a safe space for survivors. We also wanted to create something that we didn't get when we were going through our own domestic violence um, situation. So we wanted to create a coalition of sisters that have been through domestic violence, that have been through human trafficking, um, has been through any trauma, right, that has impacted them. We needed them to know that they have a support system. Um, and that could look like many things, right? That could mean doing workshops that can mean, you know, myself getting on the phone and checking up, checking in with survivors, things of that nature. Um, things that we felt that were that we like I said, that we didn't get that that were important to us that we that we know that can support survivors. Um, what was your other question? Can you explain what D V is, but I want to make sure y'all know. Sisters in Purple is everywhere. They're not only October people. They are everywhere. Oh, yeah, they, are are <laughs> they are active. I, I want you to know. They are active. They go out and they make sure they do stuff with policy and things like that. They're fighting for your needs. So I'm just saying, they're not here for talk. They're here every time of the year. I want to put it out there because, you know, I'm not saying other organizations are not doing that. But I see them at a lot of, when I go to DV events, I see them there. Whether it's right. one person, two people, they are there. And they do community like engagement. Not only just like only DV events, they do other things in the community so people understand what it is. A lot of times, these things are happening around us because we're so used to it happening. We think it's okay and it's not okay. So they make sure to put themselves in the community so people can understand what it's about and be giving out the information. So just be aware of that, guys. And the information yeah. is down below. I'm just saying. <laughs> But no, so it's so serious for us, and it was intentional for us to be in communities, especially communities that's been impacted by domestic violence, but not only domestic violence, but when you think about domestic violence, people don't know, like, the family court, um, systems like ACS, NYPD, all intersect with those, um, with domestic violence. So yeah. we go out into those communities, and we're letting them know, educate people, because you'll be surprised, people don't know. Um, so we go out and educate um, people, who are not only people, but the youth. Um, and I have to be intentional mm -hmm. about that because we educate the youth on what domestic violence is, how you can pre pre prevent it, right? So we're letting our young men know, like, listen, yeah, if you smack a female or a young girl, like, you could possibly go to jail, right? Um, right? Um, so we're letting them know, like, those prevention tips ahead of time. So it's like, oh, you go into hit someone, you think twice, right? right. Um, not only that, like you said, I want to eat, eat, like make that clear it's not just domestic violence awareness month it's every month like we're doing these things um whether it's um just doing a workshop or popping up in your community and having table and resources that you know that are in your community right, right. um where, whether we have um resources that for people that cause harm because reality is like there is there, there's a problem right so we want to get to the root of the problem um but also prevent it for the next you know the next um Generally. population of people so right. i think for us um, it's important for us to not only be in a community, but to educate 
educate the community. Um, we love um, holding sisters accountable, right? Because it's just like, you say you're out here doing this, you're saying you're doing this for survivors, but are you really doing that for survivors? Right. <laughs> because we're getting the calls. Like, you know, like I can tell you now, like I'm in the middle of helping a survivor that's in the hospital as we speak. Mm. Um, so it's just like, and she's in Yonkers. There's no resources in Yonkers. Right. Um, so now it's like, oh, we're all juggling, trying to figure out how we can get resources to her. But not only that, make sure she's safe. Exactly. Um, but also the aftermath. Like, so we're, once we make sure she's safe, it's also making sure that she has therapy. It's making sure that um, she has a support system, whether that looks like me calling her or her coming out to our community events, because that's also support as well. It's definitely true. It's a lot, to be honest. And I'm glad that you have resources for people who are actually doing it. I think some organizations only think about the um, the survivor, which I feel like the survivor, they need all the help they can get because they need it. But a lot of times, those same people who are doing the attacking were also survivors in their own right of something else. I'm not giving them that is okay. No, I'm no, not girl, that. girl, it took me. So I will say, like, I came out of my situation in 2018. There's been a lot of healing. It took me a while to figure out, even with my own situation, like, oh, shoot, like, the kid's father had, he had issues that had nothing to do with me. Right. Had nothing, nothing to do with me. <laughs> nothing to do with me. I just happened to be the person that tried to help him through those issues, but he couldn't. But you're right. Like, he had issues from, like, childhood that he didn't deal with. Better yet, his mom didn't deal with it, right? He, right. His mom didn't deal with certain things, and that's what he grew up to be something that he couldn't even figure out. He didn't even understand, I feel like. And even still, you know? Right. It's definitely true. It's very hard. And again, I'm not I'm not here to say that's okay on their part, but a lot of people hurt people, hurt people. That's what they tell you all the time. And a lot of times they see these they grow up in the house that is okay to bash mom in the head. Or mm -hmm. okay the um wife to hit the husband and think or or downgrade. You're not he lost his job, but all of a sudden your name calling him, you dirty this, dirty that, but he's working all this time, but he just lost his job. It happens. Why are yeah. you name calling? So we have to take accountable as a society how we do things and we all are intersect in some type of way. So we have to make sure we take accountable for ourselves and make sure we guide our children in the right way. And if you see you might have a problem, uh, maybe a too much of a slick tongue. Maybe you should get some help for that. You know, um, yeah. And then that's the thing too, like there's help. There's help for people yeah. that cause harm. And I think it's important for us to get that out there too. Um, and that's what we do at Sisters in Purple. Like we do help um people that cause harm. We connect them with resources. Um, we have connections to organizations that do that as well. So we, you know, we have a situation that's like that, just like, okay, let's reach out to an organization that does, you know, that actually do that work. Right. Um, but we 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 believe that they need help as well. Like the person that caused harm, the abusers, they need help as well. Um, I don't know if they need us. They might need a safe space, you know, just to let out all the things that they are going through or they've been through that right. they can't talk about. Exactly. For sure. So mm -hmm. please tell people, I know this is an old question, but what DV actually is and what types of it and how can you see it in your, your life? So domestic violence is something that can come into light to your life as early as 12. Right. Um, and I say that because it came into my life at the age of 13. Um, it could be verbal, it could be emotional, it can be physical, um, it could be mentally intrusive as well. Um, right. but let's talk about the family violence. I think when we talk about domestic violence, people always feel like, you know, because their partners, like that's it, like that's the only domestic violence. Um, but domestic violence can happen in teens, it can happen at its earliest. 12, like I said, but it goes into adult year two. Um, we have family violence where it could happen in the home where your mom could be just verbally abusing you, um, mentally abusing you, physically abusing you. Um, not only your mom, but your dad, your siblings, things of that nature. Um, domestic violence doesn't only impact, I want to say, like the survivor and the people that are in it. It also impacts your family. Um, the outside people as well that is close to you. Um, domestic violence is also a public health issue that people don't take serious <laughs> at all. Um, it takes a while, I think, for people. I've I've heard people say, "Well, yeah, I've healed over my domestic violence," and I'm just like, "Well, what does that look like?" Like, <laughs> I'm still healing, and I've been out right. only five, six years, um, and still trying to figure out, um, you know, my PTSD that comes from domestic violence. Um, my children's PTSD because they saw the abuse, right? Since like young. Um, 
I'm still working through that with them. I have a six, my oldest is 16, year, 16 years old. Um, and he's still working through like mental health issues um, due to the domestic violence, right? Um, still trying to like figure out. I think for me, it's still like, it's, it's still a question like, is this, was this a, the best move or was this not? Yeah. Um, because now my son is talking to his dad. Um, but reality is, I guess, I think for me, it's like, maybe that's what he needed. Who knows? Yeah. But um, I think domestic violence in a, a nutshell is what I said, but it, I, I like to iterate that it impacts the children more than we think, um, more than we know. Right. Um, and that's kind of what I'm living in now Um, with my 16 year old going through his mental health issues and things of that nature, just realizing like it has impacted not just me, but everyone, you know, that's been involved. Right. I think a lot of times when situations do happen, we do forget about the children around us. And unless we, even though we know our child is seeing it, sometimes we think they're not seeing it. They know how you feel and they feed off the energy that you give. They didn't know mommy is this way. They know that something has changed and something has changed. What what made that change? And they might look out for those changes in the future to say, oh, that's why mommy's acting that way. Mm hmm that way so we definitely need to think more about what happens around our children i know a lot of people they leave because it gets too much and it's too much for their children they overcame by themselves they came by their children more of how they are and i wish like i, I said in another video that i wish people love themselves so much more that they and just not only for the kids do it for yourself to get out of Wait, it uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it's it's all different reasons why these things happen you know so i just want to just be put it out there love yourself love your kids and get out as soon as possible. Don't wait till it gets too late. I know her person yeah. got shot up in the street in New York City. Um, and don't wait till it gets to that point because she's lucky she's alive today. And mm -hmm. she's family, but I'm gonna say she has two or three kids now and a new husband. But it can get crazy. It starts small. It's a cycle. It starts small. Yeah, it starts as little yeah. as like verbal. Um, I know for me, like it started little as like. And at that time, I was 13, so I was in middle school. So he would be coming to pick me up from school all the time. You know, oh, me wow. thinking, like, you know, I'm like, oh, that's cute. You know, like, like I'm young, so I'm in middle like, school. Hell. I'm like, okay, my man is coming to pick me up. No, but just realizing, like, he was, that's how he kept tabs on me at that time. Because reality, we were young. So he really couldn't really do as much as he wanted to. Because I was still in the household with my mom. Right. Um, or, like, I think at that time, we had house phones, so he would always be calling my house phone, like, things of that nature. I think one time we had gotten to, like, this big, I don't even remember what the big argument was, but he threw all my stuff, like, all my clothes and stuff down the incinerator. Um, like, just threw all my stuff. Like, just threw all my stuff. <laughs> and um, those, and even then, like, I was young, those signs, I still didn't see then. I didn't know what I was in. I couldn't even, I didn't even have a name for it at that time. Um, like I said, I was 13 um, and couldn't even figure it out. Of course, my mom and my dad, they saw it. They were like, oh, no, I don't want you around that boy. And, and because they didn't want me around him, even more made me go be around him. <laughs> um, yeah. So it started, you know, little things like that. Mentally throwing my stuff out, emotional, verbal, things like that. Control, him trying to control me, control my friends, where I'm going, things of that nature. And at that age, yeah, I was young. So, of course, I was like, eh, okay, like, that's cute. He don't want me with the first. Like, I thought that was cute. Yeah. Um, Until I got older and it was like, that wasn't it, you know? <laughs> like, he was trying to control your whole life. <laughs> oh, man. How old was he? Because he said he's driving. So, it sounds like he's older than, well, I don't know if he was born, if you're here or in the He was like three years older than me. Yeah. He wasn't that much. So I think I was, thir I was 13. So he was about 16. Yeah. 17. Mm -hmm. 17. Yeah. Well, interesting. That's in New York City or a different state? No, this was in the Bronx, New York City. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was driving around? Who called he got? Who was driving? Oh, no, he wasn't driving. Oh, I thought you said he drive. Oh. <laughs> Hell no, he wasn't driving. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh -uh, he was just driving. Mm -mm. So but we stayed together for a while. Like I literally just I oh. left him in 2018. Um and it's funny because some some of his mental health things started spiraling in. And um and I was just like, Yeah, this is a lot. Like you have your mental health issues and you try to kill me. It's a lot <laughs> too much. So I have to figure out I have to bow out. I gotta go. Um yeah. and I'll never forget like that day I told him I was going to the store, packed the kids up. I was like, listen, we 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 going to the store. <laughs> and that was the last time I seen him. That was it. <laughs> wow. 
So mm -hmm. that's basically, you end up kind of homeless if you think about it. Like, I don't know if you consider it that, but you literally had to take your kids and leave everything. But I would, in my mind, you leave stuff behind. You took probably, I want to say birth certificates, social stuff like you probably need what's important. It looked like you didn't even take I didn't take none of that. I was, <laughs> so it's funny because this time around, because I had many times that I left this person. Like I had so many times that I left him. Um, and I went into TV shows and things of that nature. This time, that was my apartment. Um, mm -hmm. So I was leaving. I went to my mom. She had a house in Jersey mm -hmm, at that time. And um, she was just like, let's go. And I was that was my safe haven for like a couple months. I'm not going to lie because I was just like, I'm not going. I'm not going back into nobody's shelter. I have my own apartment. It right. took me a while to even go back into that apartment because so much things happened into that in that apartment, even with my daughter. Like she we couldn't even we wouldn't even we couldn't even sleep. Like his smell, everything was just still there. So I literally had to clean out, like clear that house out. Um, but I was, yeah, for a while I was I would I would it's funny because I would be in the neighborhood and I would not go to my apartment. Like it would just be there. Like I wasn't there for like a month. Months, months, months. It took me a while to go back. Yeah. So you might as well say, yeah, I was homeless <laughs> because I was not there. Mm -hmm. How much time, like, did you st like go leave and then come back, leave and come back? Because a lot of times they say that people are survivors. It takes them. A person will say in the average, I think seven, <laughs> five say, times, five times. That's not just. Yeah. That's a lot of times. You know, it's a lot of times. <laughs> that last time was like, uh, uh. That's it. It's all right. No, I can't do more. <laughs> like. No, yeah. Yeah. I left a good five times. Yeah. And every time, you know, he would pull me back in, call me or have his mom call me. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to have the charges drop. Yeah. That's, I want to say one thing. Parents, if y'all know your child, say, look, if you know your son or your daughter is hurting somebody else, do not make them, ena enable them. To do this to other people is not right. Don't be a parent. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Come back. They might change. You know your child has a problem. You probably saw this problem years ago. And you want them to be tangled up with somebody else to make their lives worse. Plus they got children. Uh-huh. It made be so much sense. Because I was, listen, I was doing everything for this man. I was his mother. So she didn't have to do nothing. She knew she, knew she had a monster on her hand. Right. Um, and even now, like, still, like, you know, like, we're cordial because of the kid, but she can't. She she's in denial. It's like, oh, what she said? She was like, oh, I don't get involved with you and him. Have I was like, you don't have anything. I don't right. speak to this. <laughs> like, lad right now, she just. <laughs> and then I remember recently she added my Facebook, and I told the kids I was like, your grandmother um blocked me. Um, and it might have been because it's too much for her. Like on my page is domestic violence. I don't care. It's everywhere. Um, but I told my daughter, I was just like, well, your grandmother was probably scrolling back to like 2018 when I was in court and stuff. And yes, I was bad. I was upset. <laughs> There's a lot of things on my page, <laughs> but it's things like that where it's just like, it's just accountability, you know, take accountability that your son did hurt me. He did do some things. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> like, right. It's nothing that you can say is, it happened. It is what it is. Yeah. Even your grandkids seen it. So it's not like, oh, it's just me saying this. These are other people's words against your son. So that's why I never, it's like, I can tell my story, but you know, like my, my son could tell a, a lot much more because he, he was there. He was around a lot of, a lot of time, you know? Yeah. So you're right. <laughs> yep. Domestic violence can do a lot of things to a, pe a person. It can change your, 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 how your brain works. You know, like when something happens or when you learn something, a new memory, your brain kind of makes makes core memories. It makes things like that. And a lot of that can change. A lot of domestic violence people, persons, I guess you could say, have also head injuries. Yeah, I know I interviewed somebody, I think it was a neurologist a couple months ago about how they, um, I want to say they were with New Destiny, which is another um, nonprofit that does domestic violence and things like that. And they talked about how um that people would who get trauma in their head because they got hit so much because of this thing happening to them all the time and they don't right. realize at the time that it's happening they wonder why I'm getting dizzy why I have blurry sight because or blackout right exactly they don't know and these things a lot of different things can happen you might like he yeah, he might hit me a couple of times but you don't realize how much this can affect your life in the future you might think now yeah I love him but after you finally have enough you know sense to leave him What's going to happen in 10 years? What's going to 
Are you going to get my, like, there's so much things that could work with this, and they're doing a, a lot more studies on it, because I think a couple of years ago, they didn't realize how these things were connected. And when they look into the people, they was actually having these head conditions, you know? They realized that, that a lot of them were domestic violence um, survivors. Wow. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of those things, too. It's like, you might think, is it, I'm, I'm fine today, but what's going to happen in the future? What's going to happen when they turn, not on you anymore, they turn on the kids that you have? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... And I'm not going to say only, you know, I'm an advocate for families, but a lot of people are single people with no kids and they are affected this by this a lot. Um, and we have to make sure we advocate for everybody. Everybody, yes. We are in, in life, whether you have kids, no kids. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm a very, very big component on that. Like, I think people think that everything I do is mostly for families, but I do advocate for the youth, for single adults, because a lot of times people think that youth, you know, they're just youth. They're going through hormones. But the little girl right now is crying because her boyfriend gave her black eye when she go home. Like, what happened? I ran into the door and all my friends was playing. I got hit in the eye. But no, the parents doesn't know that is this her boyfriend. If they even know she has a boyfriend, it's doing this to her. Yes. So just be aware of that. Talk to your children. And I know for, for a fact, your kids, you could talk to them till you're blue in the face. They don't listen. I think what we need to advocate for is more things in the schools. I think when your parent is telling you one thing, it's like, whatever. But when a teacher tells you or a guidance counselor tells you, you tend to listen more. Mm -hmm. You need to have resources like that before we get crazy out of it. Or like, it gets worse. Because it's not going that at this point. <laughs> it's, it's true. Worse. It's true. And that's one of the conversations that we've been having at Sisters in Purple, too, is trying to figure out how we could get into the schools. Um, I know for myself, I use my kids. Like, not even use my kids. Like, my daughter went. I think she did a project last year or something like that at middle school. Um, and it just, it was a social justice class. And, and for me, I was like, oh, they have that in um, school? Like, they need to have social justice classes in every school. Right. Um, so, and I think that they were talking about domestic violence. So she brought me in and Angelina, and we came in and did, like, a whole presentation for the kids. The things that were coming from these kids' mouths was just like, oh, shoot. Like, you have one kid saying, like, oh, shoot, last night he saw his father, you know, do something to his mom yeah. but I think reality is like him having that safe space to tell us but also now we were allowed we were allowed to say okay like well we could take this resource home right um and not give it directly to your mother but just lay it on the table um yeah. but now we also have to make sure like the schools because it's like if you say that in the school that's not a safe space in school because now that's a report right. <laughs> a report to the SCR or a report to ACS so it's also giving the school the tools on how to how to navigate that as well because it's like that don't have to be a report. Um, that could be some resources, like some resources. Um, I don't know something, something unless, tangible. Unless the person's coming after the kid too, it might not have to be. But New American general is real quick to take up these kids from their parents, and it's like I understand it's it's so much. It's I'm a foster parent. Well, yeah, I'm technically a foster parent still until December, until my license. Really? Okay. I, mean, yeah, I used to have a daughter with me. I'm here. She was with me for two years, but I'm, oh, I'm, wow. stopping, I'm stopping my <laughs> thing because my my actual daughter cannot take when a child's with her to get taken away from her. So I can't just do that to her anymore. But yeah. um, I know the system can do a lot and they can rip people from homes. And then other times, some kids need to be ripped from home because they just, mm -hmm. it's just not good. I don't advocate for every single kid who's taken away from their parents to not go back. I think some of them should go back. Some of them don't need to go back because their parents are doing some things was ridiculous. And right. sometimes they work so hard and they get back on their feet so well and they clean up their life and they, them people deserve to have their kids. And the kids can see how far they went and how much they love them to get them back. Those kind of parents, I don't mind getting kids back to, but right. parents are not doing the right things. Maybe not. But, um, no. Hi guys. So this comes to the end of our podcast. Please check us out next week for part two. I'm going to also tell you, it's going to be in part two or three, <laughs> that we are changing our schedules. So we're not going to be going every week anymore. We'll still have hot topics, but we're going every other week so we can give you more wonderful content. If you want to be a part of the podcast, definitely check us out. Go on our social media platforms and see us on there. We are posting I want to say every other day or so on those platforms. And if you have any questions, any concerns, definitely go on, um, down below and everything will be down there for you to get. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye.